Hello ladies and gents, hope you're well. I uh, thought I'd do a quick video for you. It's been a, quite a while, I think six months since my last update. And um, generally because you can't buy anything, it's been a, I think everyone will agree, it's been a tough year. If you want to, 2021's been a tough year if you wanted to buy anything recently. Um, it's been quite hard because of the stock, particularly with uh, what we would to our eye look, which is Rolex um, models. It's been bloody hard to buy anything. Um, I've bought, uh, we'll obviously do an unboxing in a minute. I've bought a few down for you to see, um, just because uh, I'm probably going to do an update with the collection where it is at the moment. Um, but normally what I tend to do is rotate my watches around. So uh, don't keep them all here for obvious reasons in the house. Um, so I, uh, I kind of tend to have two or three, or if I'm gonna do a, a couple of videos, maybe a few more, but I never keep all of them in the house. Um, that would be stupid. Uh, but here we go, she's got a root beer on. Lovely, uh, I haven't worn this for a while. Um, so I thought I'd bring it out and um, start wearing it again. Uh, really nice daily as well. The date just there in the top right hand corner. That's a, a fantastic watch. I actually bought that pre-owned. Um, really, really happy with that and uh, use that quite quite a lot it's a great classic timepiece they just uh, it's actually a date just two not a date just 41 rather sorry um but really really nice blue dial um as you can see it is a worn but uh, they all should be shouldn't they and then uh, I've, I've bought this one as well <coughs> um this was purchased in january so i've had this just under a year sorry about this not very clean is it um but uh, yeah this is a cracking piece um, I actually have worn this more than the Submariner. I really like its size, depending obviously your wrist size, but the Sea Dweller 43 has been a fantastic watch. So I've really enjoyed that as well. So just thought I'd bring those three out for you. Um, so yeah, kind of, um, this year has been difficult uh, in terms of buying, I think that's anything, houses, cars, uh, watches, anything that basically last year, I think it's kind of put a halt to a lot of production and a lot of things. So it's been really, really difficult to buy. And so I've kind of moved on, really. I, I thought, well, you know, don't get me wrong, I've got relationships with a lot of uh, a lot of ADs or a few Rolex ADs. Um, and, um, you know, it's but it has been difficult. And, uh, you know, whether you speak to them, it's like, well, look, we haven't got anything. And you don't want to be texting them every uh, every two weeks. It's a bit boring. So, so I got bored. I thought, you know what, I want to treat myself. So I don't know if you've seen a video, but I've actually got a Zenith El Primero Chronomaster in rose gold. And I have to say, I do like my rose golds, obviously with my, my root beer and uh, my Zenith. Um, and this this came up, this was actually a used watch. Um, so I bought it on a very well-known online retailer, and they're massive, so we'll probably know who they are. And um, it just it was priced fairly well. So I thought, you know what, actually for a classic watch which we'll see in a minute um i thought it was really good value for money so so here we go so what we've bought is a breitling navitimer kapawi look at that but it is the uh, b01 so it's got the in-house movement with breitling so really really it's really smart uh let me just give that a bit wipe quickly really smart um watch beautiful um so i want to put it on the wrist and tell you what I think of it. <clears throat> so it's a 43 mil, some of the 46s, so the worlds of the 46. This is a 43 in rose gold. That is stunning. And I did buy it pre-owned. It is immaculate. So the, the only thing that's worn on this watch is the actual leather strap itself. Everything else, the actual case, everything. Um, it's probably not a watch that was used daily. So even by the look of the strap on it, uh, is um, it's in fairly good working order. So yeah, really happy with the condition of the actual uh, watch and the actual main case itself. Um, and then obviously, yeah, there is a calf leather strap to it as well in black with like a white stitching on the outsides. And then on the, on the reverse is the, it's a genuine Breitling strap. Probably got a year or two before you want to change it, and I'll probably get a black crop strap for this because um, they just look better. Really smart. If you've got a watch that costs this kind of money, um, having a black crop strap I think would look the part. It'd look the bee's knees. So I'm going to do that. 
Um, so yeah, and then obviously the gold belt buckle as well, in really good condition, so if we can get that in. Is that working? Probably not. But yeah, basically, lovely, lovely piece. I'm not a big Breitling fan. This may sound stupid. I'm not a big Breitling fan in terms of um, I don't like a lot of their models. However, one of the reasons I like Rolex and Zenith and now this particular watch is because I like anything that has been around a long time. So the Navitamer, the Navitamer came around. I'm just going to put it on my wrist. Hang on. The Navitamer came around and I think it was the 50s and 60s. And to be fair, the design of the watch has not really changed in that time so what you see here that is gorgeous really really nice what you see here is pretty much the same as what it was back in the 50s and 60s so made for aviation made for pilots proper pilots watch um and if i'm honest i don't actually know what the traditional movements do i'm going to sit down with the actual bits in a bit and actually go through it but um but really, really gorgeous piece. Obviously, chronograph, so stop, stop pushes. Really well made. Really, really well made, actually. Oh, let's, let's just get that movement, shall we? <laughs> we can tell it's not been used. <laughs> We've started it and it hasn't started. So let's just start that again. There you go. Happy day. So, yeah, you start, stop pushes and reset, etc. But just a really nice... <laughs> Like I say, I'm not a Breitling fan, but you do not see many of these in the wild, in the rose gold cases. I think you see a lot of the worlds, which are the big 46 mils, but you don't see a lot of the 43s, and particularly rose gold ones on black leather straps, you don't. So that is one of the reasons I bought it. I don't think I'd like the stainless steel. I just thought this was a bit more kind of, uh, well, it's just a special watch. The weight of it, everything, the red red gold, rose gold, whatever you want to call it, it has that kind of uh, cued, oh, so what's the word, probably kudos, it's certainly got definitely a nice weight to it, so there's, um, yeah, really, really happy with the condition, and uh, it is a 2018 model year, so it's three years old, I bought it three years, three years, it's just, just three years old now, uh, Breitling's come with a five-year warranty, so really, really, uh, still under warranty so we don't need to worry about that too much either but look at that i mean it's really really nice they do do some um that have the the case back the actual um kind of uh sapphire crystal back it's well but i'll be honest with you i prefer the, with the rose gold having it with the weight um you know you're getting better value effectively if it's an all metal watch as opposed to a half metal back and glass um, and then you've got, obviously, with it, I'm going to just put that down. Is that going to sit there? Hopefully it does. Um, and then in here, I'm sure we all know with unboxings what it covers and what it doesn't. But quite clever, actually. You've got, I won't go through the actual, can't go through the serial with you. So I'll have to just put that to the side. But basically, that there is effectively a digitalized card, like a warranty card. So it tells you, obviously the make, the model, the year of manufacture, everything. Um, and that is almost like a digital card. So that's quite smart. That goes in the back of the actual wa the warranty card uh, itself. And then you've got obviously your slide rule instructions, uh, your international warranty. And then just below there, that is your kind of, uh, I'll just open it up for you. That is your kind of a warranty certificate, or sorry, I should say guarantee or chronometer authorization or cost certificate um, that comes with each watch. So yeah, so really happy with that. Uh, really, really beautiful piece. Um, and then you've just got another, that's the actual instruction booklet itself, and then the slide rule as well. So it came with everything, box, papers, uh, inner and outer box. And then obviously that just goes back there. It's actually quite clever, really. I mean, I'll be honest with you, the Zenith boxes are a bit more, I don't know what the word is, but they're a bit of a higher standard. I mean, it's a nice, really nice leather leather finish to the actual box itself. Brown leather stitching, white leather stitching on brown. So really nice, the case is in really good condition. So that's actually quite nice. And that obviously sits in there like so. That watch obviously sits in inside. Um, but the box itself, I suppose, I mean, this has a retail value of £18,000, £17,999. And that's from like any kind of decent high street store. 
uh, watches of Switzerland, goldsmiths, etc. They're the normal big people who retail this watch. You would think for £18,000, um, you'd get a slightly different box, but it's, you're buying the watch, not the box. So, you know, it is a bonus, I think, if you get a nice box, but uh, it's not essential. Um, but yeah, um, I didn't pay £18,000 for it. Um, they do uh, take a little bit. I, I, I suppose the West, best way of saying it is they're really good value for money. It's still a lot of money, but they do offer really good value for money. You're not paying £18,000 for it. Um, I paid just over £10,000 for this watch. Um, <clears throat> so I don't really like to have any watches over fifteen grand. if I'm honest with you, purely from an insurance point of view. Um just uh it's they're a lot easier to insure when they're less than that value um but yeah really really i'll take that orange thing away because it's not very really nice to look at but yeah really really smart beautiful uh i love the um the red uh the red second hand and then obviously your it's a panda or reverse panda so black black dials and then white sub dials and they've got the gold kind of uh numeric indices etc but Really, really beautiful, well made, and like I say, never, never had a. I had a Breitling Nava timer many years ago. Uh, I ended up selling it and then moving on to an Amiga. Um, but it is. I just thought it was just a bit different, and a forty-three mil on the wrist actually doesn't appear that big. So let's just put that on again. Sorry, guys, guys and girls. Nice looking watch. So yeah, really, really happy. Um, like I say, a lot of the Breitlings have got ETA or used to have ETA movements. I think Breitling now, ever since the last, certainly the last eight, ten years, they make in-house movements. So you're obviously getting a bit more of a premium branded uh, movement rather than an ETA. Um, so that's a bit of a bonus, especially if you're spending this kind of money. But uh, there you have it, guys. Um, it, there is a new addition to the collection. Um, I'm a little bit off because I haven't done a watch review in ages, so apologies if my grammar and uh, my kind of uh, all my abbreviations it might be incorrect. I just haven't I haven't done what a watch review for ages. So thank you for uh, thank you for watching. Um, obviously, if there's any comments, love to. Uh, I'll uh, answer back if I can. And uh, hopefully, in the new year, like I say, in the new year, we might be able to get a few more watches. It's been really difficult this year and I think probably anyone who watches this channel will agree it has been like you I don't think I've had one I've had a um a relic sea dweller which is the one above that you see there um and that is it there's there's not been anything else and that's purely down to a supply issue um and obviously the increased demand it's just gone a bit crazy so I think everyone wants a stainless steel Rolex at the moment which makes watches just like this a little bit better for value for money so uh so yeah if you don't want to wait eight years for a rolex then get yourself a nice breitling get yourself a nice zenith and um thank you very much for watching the channel and hopefully we'll speak to you soon and see you soon cheers guys